And this is Nemesis Insider. Insider? I barely know her. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Oh, He's God. at it again. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Nemesis Insider. I am your host, James Autumn, and we are here interviewing your favorite creators from Team Nemesis. And my other host down below me is... Benjamin, again. Hi. Hi, Chase. How you doing this week? I'm tired. Oh, okay. Well, uh, we'll make sure... I'm seven at work tonight, so... Yay! That's a, that's a good thing. That means That's a long stretch. It sure is. It sure is. But you know what? We got a great guest with us tonight that we you do. can ask all the questions to. She is an expert cosplayer. She does a lot of DVD and other horror-based games. Let's give it up for Miss Brandy. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, welcome Thank to the show. Thank you for having me. How are you doing tonight? Doing pretty good. Relaxing. Okay. Nice, nice Thursday, almost making it to the weekend. Almost there, right, right. Oh, hello, Mike Drop. What's up? What's up? Saying hi to Brandy. Don't say hi to me. That's fine. That's cool. No, you it's know? fine. It's fine. I get it. <laughs> She's the guest All of right. honor. I'm gonna. I, I kind of want to start this off hot and hot and heavy. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> you, Miss Brandy, are a partner Twitch streamer. What did it take oh, for you yeah. to get to that point? Like, what is, what is, what are some tips, tricks, or anything that like you might want to share that worked for you? A lot of people might be like, "How do, how do I like what, what works? How does it work?" All uh, right. Well, first, I was a lot of trial and error. I'll say that I definitely. I, I mean, it took me six years to get partner. So wasn't like you know, first thing I did worked. So a lot of different figuring which groups, which people, and which orgs to associate yourself with that are going to put you in the right headspace in the right place to be able to grow i think um the last stuff that gave me that push that i needed to get i was hovering in the like 30s 40s viewers for several years and i think the last big things that really helped me to get to that partner point was joining i joined uh team nemesis which uh instilled saw a lot of um, potential in me. And he saw that I was at that that point already. And I think meeting a lot of you guys and, and then partnering with Advanced UG and stuff like that, I reached out to a lot of more people in those similar spheres. And that helped initially. And then um, joining, like I was on a, uh, like Hover came around and the Facebook groups and uh, I started doing YouTube more. So going onto other platforms and really... Spreading out my content and trying to reach more and more people beyond just Twitch itself was extremely beneficial and helpful. And also, sometimes it's just like a little bit of luck that is definitely involved. Just being in the right place at the right time and having your content in front of the right eyes is helpful. And uh, I would say your advice on to be able to get to that point is to just make sure your content is as in as many places as you can, because then it opens up that potential for the right people to see it. Like I, right, I was, I was on my partner push and I was like hitting partner numbers every day, but I wasn't hitting the spot that I needed to like be able to apply yet. I was still hovering. I actually had um, it's a professional wrestler found my my channel i was playing i was playing dead by daylight and uh he raided into me like i was in cosplay thought i looked cool like the game and then um started playing with him more <laughs> i became friends with this professional wrestler who told his other friends about me and then that was a whole new community that joined mine and gave me that last like push that i needed to like solidify that boost in viewership and, and et cetera that you know twitch needs and uh that that's what helped me get there i feel like that was more long-winded than you needed but you know now, there's the, there's the whole shebang can you disclose this professional wrestler's name yeah zilla wants to know in chat what's up lucas oh uh, who was it uh it was uh tyler breeze oh really yeah that's, pretty cool. that's dope yeah. 
As so yeah, That's Tyler Breeze dope. and Sean Spears. Oh man, um, the chairman! Cool. Oh my god! Yeah, the, I'm the a two of them—they <laughs> took a chance on me. Uh, we would play DVD a lot. We still do. And then they told uh, Chugs, aka Adam Cole, about me. He came through my stream. And then they told um, Swiss uh, Cesaro. I think is his wrestling name. Oh, Cesaro. Cesaro. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I watch Superman. I, I started watching AEW. I don't really watch WWE yet, so I don't know mm. everybody. But like Dude, he came animal. through my stream. <laughs> I, I so I had a I had a bunch of different and a, a couple of other miscellaneous wrestling people came through and I, I've played Dead by Daylight with like all of them and stuff. That's and so it's, cool. It the <laughs> the funniest part of it all is I am not I I guess I wasn't. A wrestling fan i didn't know so when he rated me my whole chat was like oh my god like breeze is in here i was like who the hell is that like <laughs> i don't know who we're talking about i had no idea who any of these people were and uh now my community is a, a big wrestling community and we like talk about aw <laughs> and stuff it's kind of awesome that is See, the amazing. adam cole one the adam cole one is my big one i was like that's for he's no so kidding. cool he is super super cool and I got to meet um like Xavier Woods. Oh uh, and he's like come through and stuff. Wait, did you I met him at I with... met him at PAX this past oh. year. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. That's Please cool. tell me there's gonna be an up up <laughs> down down with uh Brandy. Please tell me. Oh, I would love my community has already talked. I would love <sighs> it. I would love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bring me in, come on. That's so cool. So, you know, you're here now. You've had all this amazing things happen. How'd it start? Ooh, like the start of, of streaming? or Yeah. What made you want to pursue streaming? And, and when did you know it had to be a career path for you? Uh, so, okay. I, I started on Twitch about seven years, almost seven years ago now. And at the time, there was no affiliate program. And the only partners were like Summit, you know, the big, big dogs that are pulling in, you know, 20, 30,000 viewers. So the idea of it being a career was not ever a thought when I started. Um, I just, I got a, a place, it was like right around when PS4 came out. So Twitch had the like integration with it. So I was like, hey, I'm going to, you know, I want to try this out. I've seen a couple other big people that I like. And, you know, I'm really into LCS. So they were, like, live streaming all of the League games and stuff. So that's what kind of made me aware of all of it. And um, I started streaming, like, a lot of Fallout and, like, COD when I started. Which I don't play either anymore. <laughs> and, like, Battlefield and all that stuff. And um, it wasn't until, like two almost three years into me streaming that the affiliate program started and then i could you know the idea that i was like oh wow i can actually make income on here without having you know thousands of viewers every stream and you know a hundred bucks a month turned into a, you know a thousand bucks a month turned into wow i can actually live on this income outside of you know my regular job and um Right before COVID happened, I was so frustrated with my regular job. I was like, screw it. I'm going to quit. <laughs> I'm going to see how streaming goes if I do it full time. If not, you know, I'll get, you know, another job at a different place, whatever. And then like two months later, COVID happens. And COVID ended up being really good for streaming because everyone was home. More people were on their computers. Like my viewership jumped and I ended up getting to a point where I was making more than I was at my other job. And I was like, screw it. Like, I'm going to do this. And COVID, like I said, COVID was a, a good thing for this particular avenue in that, because I feel like I, I don't know if I would have gotten that jolt that I needed. I might've had to go back to, you know, teaching and I, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> Twitch was uh, a, a pleasant surprise in terms of a career, I guess, because it was never the initial goal, but I'm happy something, that it is now. Something I love hearing every time it feels like whenever James asks the question of how did you start, everyone will always immediately be like, um, it was on PlayStation. I saw people <laughs> doing it and I'm like, hey, go live. <laughs> like, I love that because it shows that <laughs> anyone can really do it. Exactly. You don't have to have like a special talent. Like you don't have, 
you'd start to kind of make yourself your own. Mm -hmm. You do it, so take the yeah. Lead. yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned that you eventually made this a way to sustain yourself financially. Uh, a question that would be good for all the people out there who don't know much about streamer lives and everything. When does that networking and work end? <laughs> it ends? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> That's it, probably, like, the hardest part of doing this, like, full-time as my job. It's hard to stop working because I'm if I'm not on my computer talking to people, putting content onto whatever platform, I'm on my phone, and then I'm on my phone talking to people, networking people, arranging meetings, and, and this and that. So I feel like I my brain is in work mode 24-7. So I, <laughs> I have to be the opposite and actually schedule days where I'm like, I am not going to work this day. <laughs> I'm not going to be responding to things. I'm not going to be on my computer. So the idea of saying when does it end, you, for at least me, I have to schedule breaks or else I won't take them. See, I respect that. And that's, that's the answer I was actually looking for because as often as I do things, I'm always socializing and connecting. I'm never stopping in my tracks, really. I'm like answering messages when I'm at my day job. And then when I come home, I'm answering more questions or I'm participating in someone's discord, trying to keep up with everybody. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's not a perfect practice. <laughs> it's exhausting. <but laughs> it really, really is. And uh, another question to you is, uh, what, what made you decide to settle in on some horror type games and different stuff like that? Um, I I've always loved horror, like, just in general, I love game the like the games, the movies, the shows, and such. And I've always done elements of horror, like the whole time that I've been streaming. But I don't know. I feel like it was probably probably a couple years ago. Um, one of my friends was he started doing like a series on his channel. He doesn't do it anymore, but he would do like a new horror game every week. So I was always like, oh, I can't wait to come back, see what he's playing this week. I love the excitement of branching out and finding all of these different indie games, like horror games and whatnot. So then I was like, I kind of want to do that. And that led to me dedicating like one day a week to specifically doing something horror related. And then like, you know, some weeks I'm like, never mind, we're going to have every day this week be horror. <laughs> but <laughs> I, it just... I, I saw that it was something that I always loved, but then I saw other people doing it. So I knew that there was, I guess, an audience and an avenue for it. So it kind of gave me that push to just be like, hey, let me just go with, you know, I really love doing horror content. And if it's not even like the series, even like Dead by Daylight, it's got horror elements. Mm -hmm. But it's also just something I can talk about a lot. So when I'm streaming it, I get to talk about all of these other spooky things, which I love. So... <laughs> Well, Wrap fantastic. it all together. You're gonna get the killer clowns in space game. Got it. Brandy's mating killer clowns <laughs> in space next. Oh, oh I don't know about that. Clowns, <laughs> clowns be weird. <laughs> not my, not my favorite. Is that the line? That that's just the line for them. <gasps> the clowns are the line. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about Dead by Daylight? What are your favorite characters to play as? Uh, well, I'm a killer main. Okay. And so I, I predominantly play Huntress and I was going to uh, Plague. I was going to say Vommy Mommy, but for anybody who doesn't know the meme, Plague. Um, in terms of survivors, I <coughs> have a soft space in my heart for both Ash and Cheryl, given the series that they are from. More spooky stuff. But okay. those are the characters I, I predominantly <laughs> play. Or Leon. We love Leon. Oh, yeah. He still has fantastic hair in the game. Just amazing. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> you know, speaking of Leon, have you seen the Resident Evil show? Do you have any hot takes on that? The new show that just, yeah. like, it was like a month ago? I have not watched it. Ooh. I didn't know if I wanted to taint my eyes with that. So <laughs> I From what I hear, it's pretty good. Are you lying to me? I only <laughs> heard bad things. <laughs> I've seen some people say good things. Well, well, while he says God. the good things, as as someone who I don't who, know the good things, I haven't watched it. As someone Twitter who loves Resident things. Evil, I, I will say the one thing I liked about the show 
was that uh, an actor named Lance Reddick is in it, and he is phenomenal. He's had a lot of good roles, but did they did they did they uh, do any justice to the Resident Evil name? Eh? Became a campy teenage show about a girl yeah, surviving a zombie apocalypse, and uh, I mean, if you like CW shows like that, then then that's for you. <laughs> Panda, hey, okay. what's up? You said it was bad. I agree. <laughs> That's a simpler explanation. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear good things about it. I'll, I know I'll eventually probably succumb to it and watch it, but I, I definitely wasn't jumping at the gun to uh to check that off my list. <laughs> and yes, indeed, uh, Brandy is wearing a Jurassic Park T-shirt. <laughs> Hell yeah. Is it safe to say you love the whole series, like even the new movies too? Um, mm. I didn't like the the second movie in the, the new series in Dominion, or not, was it? Was it Dominion or? No, Evolution? what's the second one? Evolution. Is Dominion was the third one. Whatever the, whatever the heck the second I one was. I feel like it was Evolution. Hold on. Let me Evolution. Whatever that one was. The, like, first half hour where they're, like, escaping the volcano, like, erupting and, you know, everything. That was cool. Then once they brought all the dinosaurs and they're in that, like, mansion and they're all back there. I was like, this is not Jurassic Park. What is this? This is, <laughs> like, a weird sci-fi drama now and Fallen I'm not a Kingdom. fan. Fallen Kingdom. Gotcha. <laughs> I would find it. Yeah. So hey, that movie was, um... Out of 10. Mm. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I would give it probably like a four. Ooh. But Dominion has a five point seven. I think the one after that, where they brought back the OG cast, was way better. And there were so many parallels to the original movie that I was just like, like I like this. I don't think the movie as a whole was <laughs> great, but the the odes that they tried to make to the like you know the original fans. I, I appreciated. <laughs> yeah, I appreciated that. I was like, okay, I see what's happening here. Come so in full circle. You would suggest I watch it because I did watch Fallen <laughs> Kingdom and then I was like, I, I, I don't know about this anymore. I would, su <laughs> I would suggest, if you didn't watch the last one, I would suggest it. It comes full circle to the very first like Jurassic Park movie. Ooh, okay, okay. So, it, yeah, it comes full circle and there's a lot of scenes that are like almost identical to the first movie like li not like long scenes but just little snippets and i'm like i remember this i love that you did this it's so silly but so simple and i appreciate it i believe uh Te tessa wing says in chat that their friend disliked the second one so much she said just to rent it not worth an actual buy and Oh, collect no. in your in your collection okay <laughs> definitely not worth uh it's not a movie i need to see more than once that second one so outside yeah. of jurassic park what other films uh franchises do you like Ooh, um well my favorite of like all time is the harry potter franchise i like grew up with it i've i've watched it enough to quote every single one of them like from start to finish so that's a very unhealthy obsession that i've had ever since i was a little kid uh aside from that i love all the marvel movies everything in the marvel universe i'm i'm i feel like right now i'm like so excited for what's to come because after every movie then i have like a you know a whole hour discussion with my fiance being like okay What's going to come next? This connects to this, to this. And then the show is do this. And it's like... Get the whiteboard out. Start drawing yep. red lines. <laughs> connecting everything. I feel like that meme with the guy where he's like... Ah, it's all the drawings. Yeah. That's how it is with Marvel right now. So all of those are so great. I just love superhero stuff in general. So even DC is like starting to come around with some decent films. For once. Um, and uh, what else? Anything horror, obviously. I'm always down for new horror stuff. So I have and, to ask, since you are a, a horror fan as well, what did you think of the latest Scream? Did you see it? I did. Um, hmm. I was like, I was... I was like half and half. 
I liked the movie for what it was. There was a lot of, they brought back, you know, some of the original cast. They brought in some new actors and actresses that I really liked. But I almost thought that it was, like, too self-aware. Like, I know the Scream franchise is self-aware. And that's kind of the cheesiness of it. That it's almost making fun of horror movies within a horror movie. And I felt like the new one was too on the nose about it. It was a little too... uh, If that makes sense, a little too obvious that it was self-aware. And it kind of took me out of the horror element in a lot of it. To be fair, Scream 4 did the same thing. I mean. uh, no, I agree. <laughs> I think 4 did as well. Um, but I think this one was, like, somehow more. <laughs> <laughs> it, it did become but, extra, but it was still cool seeing uh, Skeeter I did, come back. I was just going to say, uh, <laughs> I loved him coming back, even in the little, like, flashback or not flashback, little, like, ghost clip, whatever the <laughs> hell he was. I don't know. Visions, something. Yeah. I was okay. I just wanted Matthew Lillard to be in there. Like, come on. Yeah. You're, the whole movie takes place in his <laughs> old house. You're telling me he's not going to pop up somewhere? Come on. <laughs> come on. Oh, man. You know, it's been long enough. I I think we can. it's safe we can talk about the death in the movie. That, that kind of hurt my feelings. Dude! It's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> come on. I, I, I haven't seen it. I don't care, though. <laughs> I mean, just David Arquette is, uh, I don't know. It, it was really sad. It was. I had a feeling it was coming. Either him or is going to be <coughs> Courtney Cox's character. Yeah. I felt like one of them because I know, like, some tensions and stuff have been between them and, like, them not wanting all, all outside movie drama bullshit. <laughs> So I had a feeling they were going to kill off one of them. So it was only a matter of time. They see, like, died trying to fight back and be heroic. Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> got a, got but we a know there's going to be a sixth one. We actually have two questions, but go ahead and ask one of them. Oh. Are you a Dragon Ball Z fan, Brandy? Uh, y- no and yes. Oh. Um... Ooh. You just yeah, a lot of fans out Chase there. is gonna have to leave okay. the call now. So He's done. Not a fan. I'm not not a fan. I guess I'll go with this. I watched it when I was younger. I never got super super into it. Um, my like biggest gripe, at least, it's not as bad as it was then. With let me finish before anyone comes for me. Uh, I I wasn't a huge fan of the fact that they were like, hey, let's narrate a fight for six episodes. And then we'll finally finish the fight, except it's not really finished because we're going to have another one in another episode that's going to go on for just as long. So my brain was just like, okay, I'm bored. I need something else. And then like Sailor Moon was better. So (laughs) that was where my brain went when I was little, you know? Listen, this is where my like 12 year old brain went, okay? And Dragon Ball, I got Sailor Moon. Then like as I got older, um, I I kind of tried to watch it again. I, I dated several people that were, like, super, super into it. So I would watch it periodically here and there. But I never, like, cared to get back into it because I never really cared for it as a kid. However, recently, my fiancé brought me to see the new movie, which was, like, this past month. And I really liked it. It was, <laughs> so I you're it was saying that you watched really all good. Of Dragon Ball Super... You watch Dragon Ball Super Broly, then you no, watch the No, uh. I didn't watch any of that. I just watched the You're new his movie. Heart. Look at him. He's he doesn't know I'm how to react. I'm saying that I dislike it. I just <laughs> as a kid so many plot holes missed. <laughs> oh, I, know I missed a ton. I missed a ton. And I even asked him, I was because he's a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. And I was like, can I see this movie and know what's going on? And he's like, yeah. He's like, you'll know the gist of what's going on. There'll be a couple things you don't know. Ooh. And I feel like I still got the movie. But... I haven't and it, seen like, it yet, so I can't confirm or deny. <laughs> it, honestly, it wasn't much left out that, like, I was confused about. It seemed like a one-off story. And, like, I'm, I'm familiar with a lot of the main characters, because I have watched the show in the past. So oh, I'm not thanks. saying I dislike it. But I'm also not saying, like, it's my favorite thing ever. It took me a while to really give it a chance, is what I'm saying. 
Oh, man. See, this done sparked a who can beat Goku discussion in chat, and now we're going to have to break that up soon. Uh, but we do Sailor have another... Moon can actually beat Goku. That's the thing, though. Ooh. Sailor Moon can beat Goku. <laughs> so, uh, Chase, we're going we're gonna to do a new segment called uh, Getting to Know Chase, because somebody asked, what is your favorite food? <sighs> My favorite food. I answered it in chat, but I'll do. I'll go into a little bit more detail. Um, any Mexican. I'm big. I'm a big quesadilla person. Like, like quesadillas. quesadillas. Nice quesadillas. I like yeah. my enchiladas. My enchiladas. There um, you go. Definitely some uh, f f uh, those, those things. Those fajitas. There it is. Yeah, fajitas are a big plus for me. Okay. But yeah. What about you, James? Let's do a little segment on you. <laughs> Brandy's okay. the new host. All You're right, Brandy. Now. Go ahead. Ask me a question. <laughs> are we going? Are we continuing with feuds? Uh, it, it's so. whatever you want. You're the boss now. <laughs> oh, oh! Now you're gonna you're gonna put the uh, the spotlight on me. All right, fine. Here, this is a super hard question. What is your favorite video game of all time? <laughs> oh darn! I, I don't even know this one. <laughs> Holy cow! Oh, open up a new door. Or franchise? I'll give you that. Oh, game or franchise? Man, this is gonna surprise everyone. Like nobody's gonna see this one coming. Is, and... uh, is it? Is it really? Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is is it starts with the letter F? Chase, I don't think you know it yourself. You haven't known me that long, so I don't think you'll I don't even know. know. Hold on, let me see. Let me see if I can guess it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. If you want to take a guess. Um, oh. Fear. Ah, strike. You're out, buddy. That's all you get Darn. is one. No, I love Fallout. It's, it's what made me. <laughs> I thought me... you were going to say Fallout. <laughs> it's what brought what me here. Thinking. You can't see it, but it's hanging up over there, my vault suit. I actually have a real one because I'm a nerd for it. Hell yeah! Still gotta the way, build the I pit knew boy. What but... it was. I was just Ooh, I was you could 3D just print one. How many guesses he was gonna let me have? <laughs> yeah, no, no, Chase. I mean, how many times I could pull his leg before he's like, "All right." He's he's not whatever. known me near five years, so he wouldn't know my. I was gonna things. say I haven't known <laughs> five years down the drain, James. I see how it is. I know. Well, this is our last podcast with Chase, everybody. <laughs> what do you We're mean this is our last team. podcast with James, guys? I'm taking <laughs> over. We'll, we'll figure this out later, but Brandy's the new host. Welcome her in. She's doing great so far. <laughs> All so right. have Pokemans behind you. What's your favorite generation and favorite Pokemon? Yeah, go for it. Uh, I guess favorite Pokemon is easier. It's Umbreon. It's been Umbreon since I played Pokemon Coliseum back in the day on the GameCube. Did you ever played that game? Yourself, everybody. <laughs> so, ever since, pick. Yeah. Ever since I played that game, I fell in love with Umbreon and Espeon and uh, stuck with that. In terms of favorite generation, I feel like it's classic to just say, you know, the original generation. But I also, I mean, Johto and Hoenn are also just so good too, so it's hard. But I, I probably still would stick with Kanto. Yeah, that's where it started for me too. I was too broke to have those kinds of video games, but you know, seeing the episode with Charmander, that that little dude won me over. He was he was a little bad boy. Yeah, a little, and then... little sleepy Charmander up here. I see. Bye bye Butterfree made me cry. All right, right. <laughs> it made me cry. I'll admit, it made me cry. <laughs> Even as like a rewatching it, I was still like, "God, they really got this, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> they really set the scene." <laughs> uh, one of our uh, viewers in chat uh, named Monkey D. Rufy also is asking about One Piece. Is is there any love for One Piece in here? Uh, I've never watched it, never so watched it. I I I. Again, y'all are probably gonna hate me. Um, I don't have any interest in watching it. I don't really like the art style. I, it's not super appealing to me. Also, the fact that it's like three billion episodes is extremely intimidating. <laughs> um, same goes for Dragon Ball Z. So and I, I'm I'm more of a yeah. And Bleach, my my fiance <laughs> wants me to watch Bleach and Naruto, oh. and I just haven't yet. 
I like that fella. Favorites. I like that fella. If you like, Bleach is his favorite. Yeah. Oh, he can't wait for October. He's been telling me about the, the show coming. Yeah. Yeah, but I've been <laughs> hearing about that for her for quite some time now. I need to be friends with this man. We got some things to talk about. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, yeah. His favorite characters, well, he loves Ichigo and Bakugo for my hero. That's oh. like his personality. Ooh. So those are his favorites. But uh, what was it? Oh yeah, One Piece. <laughs> No, I have not watched it. But um, ironically that you say that, I uh, I have like a thing on my channel where I let people um, choose like bit redemptions and then I'll put up like a GIF for whatever number they want. And somebody just requested one today and it's a One Piece GIF. <laughs> nice. So I'll be having One Piece on my stream now. I have so many different miscellaneous things that people like. I have one that's an Inuyasha one, and every time someone sees it, they're like, "Oh, you're a fan of Inuyasha," and I'm like, "I haven't watched it." It's a great, <laughs> it's a good one. It's a, it's an old one. It's an oldie but a goodie. It's a good. Yeah, story. I've heard it's good. I haven't gotten around to watching it, but yeah, it's... people ask me like every day. They're like, "You're a fan?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> Somebody redeemed that. I'm sorry. You're gonna like, have to one like of those ones. You do YouTube, like, right, yeah. Brandy? So you're gonna Don't have to swim. do some reaction videos to at least some iconic anime episodes, and then you know, at least tell I people know. you gave it a shot. You know, you're breaking some hearts in here not watching oh, I through know. Dragon Ball, and just... <laughs> I'm more of a like. 20 episode anime one and doneer that works for me that's that's the extent of my mental capacity once it goes past like hundreds of episodes i'm like what what is happening anymore <laughs> fair enough i did the same thing with walking i got Dead. You. 20 episodes plunderer. And I was done. Plunderer. plunderer plunderer is a very good anime it it's is only really like good 22 episodes i think or 24 yeah that gotcha. one's really good i like a lot of horror and of course, it. of course I do. <laughs> I watch a lot of horror, gore, fighting, killing, action type animes. My, and my cup of tea. Weedum Boys asked, uh, what's your favorite Pokemon game? Favorite Pokemon? Pokemon Coliseum. My favorite. It, it was since I played it, and honestly, <laughs> I don't think I've played a game that tops it since. Ooh. I love Even it. with like the open world stuff they're doing now for the Switch versions, I did. I really, I loved Arceus. I really, really did enjoy that. But maybe it's also half nostalgia. But I don't know. I just really liked that game. I like the one-off Pokemon games more than the standard franchise ones because those feel like repetitive and just rewashed. Mm -hmm. Um. Where it's like, here's the same thing. You have to battle through all these gyms, get all the badges, fight whoever the elite whoever is for this particular generation, and then spend the next 20 hours collecting every <laughs> single Pokemon in the game. <laughs> Let's do it again for the next generation. And it's like the same thing. So I like those games, but the ones outside, especially anything that came out in like the GameCube was just like top tier content for Pokemon. <laughs> In my opinion, personally, it was a really good for Nintendo. It was a really good console for Nintendo, anyways. Mm -hmm. So many of our favorite games, you know, Resident Evil Four, you know, just saying, just saying, <laughs> it was excellent. <laughs> Those wonky ass controls, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, I was actually just talking. About, have you guys played the game Song of Horror? Uh no, I haven't. Chance? I just I just streamed it recently. It's like kind of like episode. Each episode is a different um, location and characters you choose from, but it's one continuous story. But the reason I bring it up is because it's very reminiscent of like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, and it's very much so with the movements. Because there would be times that I'm like, oh, I'm gonna walk up these stairs, and then my character would randomly just turn around and start walking down, and I'm like, I didn't I didn't click that. What's going on? And it just made me think of the amount of times in Resident Evil 4 where I would be trying to, like, shoot something. And then I would randomly, like, turn sideways. And now I'm looking over here. And I'm like, what? I did not. I didn't click that. <laughs> Why are these <laughs> controls? And this game was like, oh, my God. It was so much like the OG, like, Resident Evil days. Right, right. Talking about games, I keep on seeing this game pop up <laughs> on my Twitter feed. I don't know what it is, but it's like an adorable ghost game that looks like Paper Mario type 
art style and it's hmm. an indie game that's on steam now and i was like this is really adorable and i can't find it or hmm. remember what the name of it was oh you're killing us here well, i know it's that's a tease me. and a half right there, here's buddy. this thing i, I don't know. know the name and i don't know where to find it but it's, <laughs> i know it's on twitter somewhere it pops up every now and again <laughs> Can we get anybody in chat to do a Google search for us? Pretty please. <laughs> All right. We need to switch gears because I, I want to ask you about where you're, uh, I want to say it's a career in cosplay. I think Wait, that's fair. I found it. that start? Oh, what's up? What's up? What's up? The outbound ghost. Outbound ghost. Okay. The outbound ghost. It is adorable and it's on steam. Ouch. I have not heard of that. I will send it to you on Twitter. Yeah. Ooh. But yeah, Brandy, where, where where did all the cosplaying stuff start? Uh, that actually started back when I was in high school. Before cosplaying was like a prevalent thing. Honestly, I didn't even know the term <coughs> like cosplay. I just thought of it as like, hey, these are people that dress up and go to Comic-Con. And I made uh, Katara from Avatar. I hand sewed oh, the guess. whole thing. Every This was back in... 2009 2010 and hand sewed the whole thing like i had just had like home and careers the year before so it taught me how to sew and crap so i had you know my like my great grandma gave me like her old you know cookie tin that only had sewing supplies in it and all that jazz <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah i made the costume just for halloween and uh my nerdy ass self was like hey i'm gonna wear this to school except i'm gonna do it every couple of weeks just because i feel like it <laughs> and uh, i would just wear my outfit to school because i was like so proud that i made it and whatnot and uh then when i graduated from high school like two three years later i had there was um a show that came out on like sci-fi it was like heroes of cosplay or something like that i think it was called and i was like oh shit like people like this is a thing that people do like they actually wear costumes like frequently and go to events and things like i thought that, that like at the time that i was doing it it was still nerdy it was not cool like people made fun of me for dressing up like people thought i was a giant nerd so i didn't realize that other people were doing this and were like proud of to do it um and then like i went to my first comic con i went to new york comic con and it was amazing you know i fell in love with it and then from there i was like okay how many and i mean i live in new york so there's a lot of conventions you know within you know a couple hours of here so one convention a year turned into 10 a year and then i was like well i go for three days for each of them so that means i need three new costumes and then I would be making, you know, dozens of costumes a year, and <laughs> it was just a rabbit hole that I just went further and further down. See, I didn't even know you, you like, made a lot of your costumes. Like, none of those were, were made yeah. by anybody else. That's all you? Um, All of this stuff probably in the past, like, two years or more things I bought. Because, like, during COVID, there was no event to go to. Um, So, like, I'm not going to make this whole big armor build to sit in my chair and stream so i wasn't really the past two years of COVID. i bought a lot of stuff on amazon but prior to that like i made everything anything that wasn't like a bodysuit i made so like my pyramid head i made the entirety of that from top to bottom um i've done a ton of league of legends cosplays i've made the entirety of every single one of those wow um <laughs> like I, i've done i did a vault um dweller and i had my friend like 3d print a pip boy i sanded it down Wait, i painted do it this? oh this was back when <laughs> uh not long after when four came out i i, I gotta see this oh my so god so i've done yeah i did a vault <laughs> dweller i've done a lot of stuff from bethesda i love i love all but i did like the keeper from the evil within if you've played that oh, game yeah. so i made like the big safe head <laughs> and the big backpack made his meat cleaver all that jazz I, I love doing that. I have a couple of things that I'm I'm getting started on working now for future events, but I I know I love. I have right on my um my stream setup at my apartment. I have like my sewing machine right next to me and everything. Like, do all that. That is incredible. How long did it take for you to actually make the pyramid head? Because if y'all haven't seen it, it is a massive set piece that she made. 
it is crazy it is. it's awesome <laughs> thank you um so probably not the smartest thing but i did it in like maybe two weeks uh most of them take me a lot longer but that one i like last minute decided to make it for con and i was like crap What's something that's kind of easy? And because he's just a big triangle and, like, he's more symmetrical, it's not... I mean, I I've done a lot, so it's not as difficult um, to do something like that really quickly. Like, he literally was, like, you know, a couple pieces of EVA foam and a shit ton of googly eyes. <laughs> and, then <laughs> and then paint all that jazz, boom, you got a giant triangle head. So that wasn't too bad, but, like, I've had other builds that took me months to do. That um, is just incredible. <laughs> what was your thanks. longest build, though? What what took you the longest to make? Um, I did Ice Drake Shivana from League of Legends. If any of you, I don't know if I you guys play League. League. So I was gonna say I don't think you do. What that is what they she's, look like. She's a um, she can transform into a dragon, and her original form. She's got like all of these icicles coming off of her, and like, but they're shaped like scales because she's a dragon. And then she has these two giant dragon claws that, when you put the claws together like this, it makes a giant dragon head. So the claws oh. come together like teeth, and it's huge and massive, and all this armor. And it took me so long to like get it right because there's no like pattern out there that I can just copy, like, I have to draw it all up myself it's a lot of trial and error a lot of like um wrapping myself in saran wrap and then <laughs> duct taping myself cutting myself out of it using that to draw a pattern for what i need and then transferring oh that to foam it's a whole process <laughs> what would you say is the hardest part about cosplaying mm. As, like, I don't know, I guess sort of cliche, just, like, actually getting started and having the motivation and confidence to do it. Because there's a lot of people I know that are like, oh, I could definitely do this or make this or buy this. But having that first push to actually get into a costume, portray that character, and then putting yourself out there for others to see you and judge you, <laughs> that takes a lot. And a lot of people get so... <laughs> put off by that initial jump that they don't even like start cosplaying so i would say once you can get past that like fear of people passing judgment or especially if you're making it a lot of time people are like oh what if they're going to compare me to someone else or if i didn't make this nice enough for that and if you can work past those thoughts and push those aside and just like focus on the fun aspect of it then everything else really isn't that difficult. There's a million YouTube tutorials out there. Odds are, even if you want to do the most obscure, weird character out there, somebody's probably made it, drawn it, or whatever, and you can kind of work off of that. That's really cool. So a lot of it's just a mental thing. Got it. I yeah. <laughs> well, I don't wear my is. bot suit outside of the house because you know I'm I'm a big fella. So like seeing myself in a giant blue suit. Definitely uh, Giant shatters blue my confidence. Skin tight suit. Yeah, <laughs> it shatters my confidence. It's like I don't want to go out like that. So I, I could see where a lot of folks would feel uh, apprehensive about just you know just just getting out there and showing off mm -hmm. their favorite cosplay because you know I'd, I'd love to go out in the vault suit, but I, I just ain't there yet. <laughs> yeah, trust me. Once you get there, and I tell this to so many people too, because they're always like, "Oh, what if nobody likes it?" Blah, blah. I'm like, you can literally have the worst you think worst cosplay you've ever made you could have put that together with like stuff from the dollar store and cardboard boxes or whatnot i guarantee at least one person at whatever con or thing you go to is going to come up to you they're going to love whatever you did they're going to ask for a photo and that's going to make your day <laughs> like and every time i said that to someone they're like yep it happened like somebody like it was my first time cosplaying and i had so many people come up to me and it's like yeah like once you get out of that mental that you're going to get judged and you realize that like people regardless if your costume looks amazing they're just sharing the passion for whatever that franchise is that you're embodying with you and it's awesome oh maybe one day then <laughs> <laughs> one day <laughs> one day i believe in you <laughs>
So, uh, Miss Brandy, do you have any kind of uh, upcoming events that you're excited for you'd love to tell our uh, current viewer base about that you got happening? Uh, yeah, actually, I leave next uh, a week from today. I leave for TwitchCon. I'm going to be in California for like two weeks. So Ooh. I'm super excited about that. I've never <laughs> been to Cali before. I've never been to TwitchCon before. So that's you know, exciting and nerving racking all at the same time. So I'm amped for that. And then uh November I have anime New York City and there that's all anime themed convention. And then December I go to Whole Mat, which is holiday Mat Surrey. It's in Florida. It's like all Christmas themed anime stuff. Oh cool. So that'll that'll wrap out my year <laughs> for cons at least. But lots of big exciting things. So I'm amped. <laughs> What about stream-wise? Anything uh, you got planned for that? Stream-wise? Um, I'm trying to think of anything in particular. I mean, I love, like, this time of the year is spooky season. So it gives me even more reason to play more spooky games. So I have a ton of things, like games on the agenda that I want to jump into that I haven't played yet. As well as new games coming out. Like, I love, uh, like, the Dark Pictures anthology and the new game of that's coming out next oh, month, yeah. so I can't wait. That's going to be so I can't good. wait to play that. That's <laughs> going to be so much fun. So I'm amped for that. I have, uh, like, next month I'm doing a charity stream for Hope for the Day, which is like a mental health and suicide awareness organization. So, and I always love working with them, so I'm excited for that. Oh, wow. When's that kicking off? That'll be on October 24th. So okay. I'm doing that. So... Oh. Right. I'm excited for that. <clears throat> and then uh, come December will be my seven-year anniversary on Twitch and my three-year anniversary of doing it full-time. So awesome. You are just a busy girl, that. aren't you? Jeez. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. <laughs> Holy cow. Like she said, it never stops. Our list, like four different conventions, charity stream, anniversary stream. <laughs> it's like, what the heck? Oh, trust me, I am always on the move. So when's vacation? <laughs> <laughs> What's when that, Chase? That? I don't know. No. I don't get vacations. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I go to TwitchCon, that's why I'm going to Cali for two weeks. So the first week, we're going to do, like, Disney, Universal, all the parks and stuff. Oh, so, you get yourself and then little, it's... Little vacation. Then TwitchCon. So we're getting a vacation in with the trip. Same thing when I go down... To Florida for uh for Hall Mat. We're gonna go to the parks down in Florida as well. So I kind of blend the vacation in with work <laughs> stuff, half and half it a little. So the challenge is is like how much of that is gonna be just not content created and just actual enjoyment. Cause you know she's gonna well. vlog it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am indeed gonna vlog it. <laughs> And uh, I'll probably be hanging out with friends and we'll be filming TikToks and <coughs> other miscellaneous things. So still probably slightly half and half, but <laughs> there are moderate amounts of enjoyment involved in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, good deal. So uh, well, where can people find you and all, you, all of your great James. content? You beat me to it. I sure <laughs> did. Uh, well, I have, you guys put the name wherever I'm pointing. I think it's over here. Yeah, it's right over uh, there. I'm X6 Brandy here on Twitch, and then I am Slay with Brandy on everything else. If you can think of it, I'm, I'm probably there. <laughs> yeah, definitely be sure to check her out and all the cosplay stuff she does. Her YouTube is fire as well, so make sure you go and check that out where she reacts to different stuff. By the way, I like the baby metal reaction. That was really cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I've been loving doing those. Those are the baby metal fan base is like <laughs> aggressively supportive and I love it. Yeah, they're they're a really, really accepting community, strangely enough. It's just like Yeah. <laughs> of course they mix cute pop vocals with metal if y'all aren't familiar and they kind of took off and one of my favorite bands uh bring me the horizon worked with them so that was really really dope but yeah that was a really cool video i enjoyed that <laughs> but um chase where can people find you since we gotta wrap this up uh, da, da, uh, da, uh, um, there you go twitch 
You see me type in chat a couple times. Uh, that's the Twitch. Twitter is Vengeance G T T V. There's no underscore because I don't know what my Twitch handle is anymore. Or Twitter, <laughs> Jesus. Um, Vengeance Gaming, TikTok, YouTube, all that good stuff. <laughs> James, where can they find your beautiful, <sighs> sexy face? Why do people always ask that? <sighs> You can find me on uh, Twitch here at James Autumn. You can find me across socials at the James Autumn. I had to redo my TikTok, so I am at Real James Autumn on there. So definitely give those a follow if you want content that's sparsely updated. But you can find me mostly on Twitch and Twitter. So definitely check those out more often than not. All right, y'all, we're gonna take off here. We love so. you. Yeah, much love. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.